الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد We'll take a pause from our regular uh, series about Tafsir Surah Al-Fatiha and talk about the last 10 nights of Ramadan because it is of course the most pertinent topic We already have the first odd night last night and we're just beginning the remainder of the last 10 nights of this holy month Realize my dear brothers and sisters that these last 10 nights of Ramadan are the holiest times of the year Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sworn, has given a qasr upon these 10 nights وَالْفَجْرِ وَلَيَالٍ عَشْرِ Allah Azza wa Jal swears by the Fajr, by the dawn and by the final 10 nights and these are the final 10 nights وَلَيَالٍ عَشْرِ and by the 10 nights and these are the 10 nights that Allah Azza wa Jal is giving a qasam by and Aisha radiallahu anha narrates in the famous hadith of uh, Sahih Muslim Aisha narrates that when the last 10 nights came the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam شَدَّ مِئْزَرَهُ وَأَحْيَا she said three things. Number one, he would tighten his belt. And tightening his belt is an expression we should all understand. What does it mean you buckle down? We say it in English, right? What does it mean you're going to buckle it down? Means you're going to make things serious now. Now is the final run. This is the end. You can see it. And psychologically, brothers and sisters, when you see the finish line, what happens? When you see the finish line, what happens? You give it your all best. You're going to go and run. You're going to make sure you get there. That's when the enthusiasm gets the highest. The first 10 days, the first 20 days is exercise. Then when you see the finish line, that's when you give it your utmost. And the good news, my dear brothers and sisters, that those amongst us, who were not that energetic the first 20 days, now is the time we can really show our true colors. Now we can demonstrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that inshallah we have righteousness in us. Because in the end of the day, what really matters is getting to that end of the line. What really matters, and even when you see recaps of the races and whatnot, what part do they show? They only show the last bit, the very last bit when the runners come there. We're in that, we're just beginning those 10 nights. So Aisha said, when the 10 nights began, our Prophet said, tightened his belt and by the way some scholars said this is a kinaya this is a an allusion to the fact that he abandoned worldly pleasures that might be halal on the nights of Ramadan by tightening his belt he's abandoning those pleasures even though it is halal uh, as you understand but he would abandon them because he has higher goals in life right so shadda mi'zarahu number one he tightened his belt number two ahya laylatahu he would stay awake the entire night Ibn Taymiyyah and others write, we do not know of the Prophet ever spending the entire night awake in ibadah except the last 10 nights of Ramadan. That as a habit, as a routine, he never spent the entire night in ibadah except on the final 10 nights of Ramadan. So he would spend the entire night awake. He would not sleep at night. He would go to sleep after Fajr. And then the third thing, ahlahu. He would wake his family up. Subhanallah. He would even wait, awaken the women. Uh, if there were any children in the house, those should also be awake. Those who are able to pray. Those who are able to, uh, to stand in salah. ahlahu. And those sisters who are not able to pray because of their monthly uh, cycle, they should still spend the night awake in dua and in dhikr and in doing something of benefit. Just because you cannot pray, my dear sisters, doesn't mean you don't do any ibadah. There's always dua, there's always dhikr, there's always learning something new, listening to an Islamic lecture. Spend the night doing something that is pleasing to Allah. And brothers and sisters, those amongst you who do have to go to work the next morning and you're not able to take off, fair enough, but do something that you would not do for the rest of the night. Spend half an hour, one hour, two hours. Take advantage of an afternoon nap. When you come home, go to sleep for an hour or two before uh, iftar so that you can then spend the night awake as much as possible. You can't spend the whole night awake. Spend one third of it, one half of it, one fifth of it. Spend something awake. And those who can spend the night awake, then alhamdulillah, this is the time to do it. So three things Aisha said. That he would tighten his belt, and he would spend the night awake and he would awaken the family. So not just the man of the house, the whole family should be in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is quality family time. Reading Quran, doing dhikr, having a nafil salah together in the household or bringing them to the masjid as we have here, uh, qiyam as well. And therefore this night has been couched in these 10 days. The holiest of holy has been decorated with these beautiful 10 days of Ramadan. And this holiest of holy is of course Laylatul Qadr. 
Qadr. And Laylatul Qadr is a layla, is a night that is so important that Allah revealed an entire surah to tell us how important it is. Suratul Qadr. There is an entire chapter in the Quran that is meant to indicate how important Laylatul Qadr is. All of the angels, without exception, they come down. So what do you think is going to happen when we learn from our traditions that every one of us has two angels and there's a Malakul Maut and there's the Malak of every mountain and there's the angel of every raindrop and there's the angel of every tree and there's the angel of every piece of land. There's an angel assigned to it. All of these angels are all congesting the highways above us. So it is Laylatul Qadr. It is a Layla, a night of constriction because all of the Malaika are here and not just all of the Malaika, the one single angel that is so holy and so blessed that Allah mentions him by name in the Quran. And Allah says, whoever dares show animosity to Jibreel, then I am his enemy. Man kana aduwan li Jibreel, such a blessed, such a holy angel. This angel was the angel that witnessed the beginning of creation, Adam alayhi salam. And he communicated with Nuh, with Ibrahim, with Ismail, with Dawood, with Sulaiman, with Musa, with Isa, with our Prophet with every single prophet he communicated. He was a friend to every prophet. He was a friend to every wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This angel only comes down to communicate with the prophets. And after the death of the Prophet there is no reason for him to come down. Yet Allah Azza wa Jal has blessed us on earth with one opportunity to be there when the angel Jibreel himself comes down and that is Laylatul Qadr. The only night that Laylatul Qadr when the angel Jibreel comes and the angel Jibreel by the way so much can be said but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises the fact that our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was allowed the opportunity to see Jibreel. Let me repeat that so that you understand. Seeing Jibreel in his original form was so magnificent and blessed and holy that Allah mentioned it as a favor to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu It's a favor that I gave you, a blessing that I gave you that you saw Jibreel. Surah Al-Najm, لَقَدْ رَأَى مِنْ آيَاتِ رَبِّهِ الْكُبْرَى He saw the magnificent ayah of Allah and the Prophet Sallallahu said this was Jibreel and the hadith mentioned this was Jibreel. So Allah said, that seeing the angel Jibreel was the magnificent sign that was given to the Prophet And by the way, what do I mean by this? He saw Jibreel hundreds of times, but he only saw him twice in the original form. In the form Allah created him. And that form our Prophet said, Jibreel had 600 wings. And Jibreel could block the whole horizon. I couldn't see anything else. فَقَدْ سَدَّ الْأُفُقْ Everything was blocked. I couldn't see anything. Jibreel is a massive angel, a handsome angel, a beautiful angel, an angel with 600 wings, an angel that is so large that you cannot see anything when you see Jibreel. And our Prophet saw him twice, it is said, once at the beginning of the revelation of the Quran and the second time in Isra wal Mi'raj. And the first time he was terrified, Ya ayyuhal muddathir, zammiluni, zammiluni. That's that story. And then the second time, he was not terrified. And that is what Allah says, لَقَدْ رَأَى مِنْ آيَاتِ رَبِّهِ الْكُبْرَى I go into a tangent, the point being, on Laylatul Qadr, what happens? This is that angel. And that's why Allah mentions him specifically, تَنَزَّلُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَالْرُوحُ فِيهَا the angels all come down and the blessed spirit, the Holy Spirit, that being whom the Christians call the Holy Spirit, is in fact Jibreel. The Holy Spirit, Allah says, وَالْرُوحُ فِيهَا وَالْرُوحُ القدس, Which is the Holy Spirit. For us, this is Jibreel. So Jibreel himself comes down on this night as one of the tabi'un, the students of the Sahaba said, I seek refuge in Allah from being asleep on the night Jibreel visits me. I seek refuge in Allah from being asleep when Jibreel comes down to this world. Ten nights, brothers and sisters, that's all it is. Now we're entering these nights. Every night of these ten is a night of ibadah, a night of tilawa, a night of extra worship. If you're able to come to the masjid, we have our qiyams from 2 to around 3.45 and suhoor every day in the masjid. If you cannot come to the masjid, do something at home. But every one of us should do our best to show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala extra efforts that we never show throughout the rest of the year. These are the nights of Jidd and Ijtihad. These are the nights of showing Allah Azza wa Jal that we want Laylatul Qadr. And remember our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if you worship Allah on this one night, 
وَمَنْ قَامَ لَيْلَةَ الْقَدْرِ Believing in Allah and expecting Allah's reward, then all of your previous sins will be forgiven. Allah knows what is the Laylatul Qadr. Yes, on the odd nights, a little bit extra. And if you have some days you can take off from work, then take off so that you can worship on the 25th, 27th, and 29th. Especially, these are the best days, no doubt. 25th, 27th in particular, and the 27th, yes, it is the, the most likely candidate. No doubt about that. 27th is the most likely candidate, but we do not know for sure. And some ulama, including Ibn Taymiyyah, have said, it appears that Laylatul Qadr varies from every year to every year. And this seems to make sense. That perhaps one year it is the 21st, another year it is the 23rd. So we try to worship Allah throughout these nights. And final point, what is to be done on Laylatul Qadr? Laylatul Qadr is a night where we increase every action of worship. There's no new ritual that is done. We pray more. We give charity if we can. We make dua. We make dhikr. Lots of dua. One of the main points of Laylatul Qadr is dua. Why? Because Laylatul Qadr, I forgot to mention the fourth meaning of Qadr, and that is predestination, subhanAllah. And that is on this night everything is decreed. So I said first meaning is that it is the night of blessing. Second meaning a person is blessed. Third meaning the night of restriction. I forgot the fourth and the most important meaning. And that is the night of predestination. Allah announces the Qadr for the next year. Allah announces who will be forgiven, who will be blessed with a child, who will be tested with a death, what will happen. So we want to be praying to Allah. You know when the results of the exam are going to be announced, right? Imagine. Now, on that day when the results are going to be put and posted, what is our situation? We're all making dua. Oh Allah, just make me pass. Oh Allah. Even though it's been done some days before. The professor doesn't grade right then and there. We hope he doesn't grade right then and there. The professor has already graded. He knows the result. But the announcement time, that's when you panic. Isn't that the case? You don't panic when he's grading because you don't know when he's grading. You, you panic when the announcement is going to happen. That's when you're praying to Allah. Oh Allah, let me pass. Let me get an A. Right? Let me get the, what is it? 44 in the MCAT these days. I don't know. Whatever it is, right? You're making dua to Allah. Now on Laylatul Qadr, Allah will announce to the angels Qadr. So what should we be doing? Dua to Allah. Because, final point, our Prophet ﷺ said, nothing changes Qadr other than Dua. So it is possible that our Dua on Laylatul Qadr will avert a calamity. It is possible that our Dua on Laylatul Qadr will cause us to be forgiven. It is possible that our Dua on Laylatul Qadr will bring about a blessing that if we did not make dua, we would not get that blessing. So now is the night to make dua. And Aisha asked the Prophet ﷺ, what should I make dua? And our Prophet ﷺ said, Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'afu anna. Oh Allah, you are the one who loves to erase sins. So erase my sins and, uh, and so therefore erase my sins. You love to erase sins. You are the afu. You erase sins. You love to erase sins. Erase all of my sins. This is the most important dua. But every dua that you can make of this world and the next is something we should be doing on these nights. May Allah Azza wa Jal allow us the opportunity to be awake and worshipping Him when the angels and especially Especially Angel Jibreel comes down. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq and the barakah to be standing in prayer to him on Laylatul Qadr. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our ibadat on Laylatul Qadr. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cause all of our previous sins to be forgiven as we pray on that night. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.